There are some undisputed classics in the racing genre, but you can't play them all on a PS5 or Xbox Series X. Choosing to play them on PC via emulation is an option, of course, but even that can cause trouble for some of these titles, not to mention being legally dodgy as well. So why not have a look at some of the greatest racing games of all time as we take the best released version and then inform you of the perfect machine to play it on. The best, after all, deserves the best. But while you're here, why not subscribe to the Traction channel? Also hit that bell icon to not miss any of our brand new uploads. Let's go! Sega's classic arcade title remains one of the finest racers of all time despite being more than a quarter of a century old. Outside the realms of fantasy, where you can source an actual Model 2 arcade cabinet, there are two conversions that catch the eye. The first is the Japanese-only PS2 version. While it's necessary to both import it and find a modded or Japanese PS2 that can play import games, it does deliver a very solid replica of the arcade game, at a lovely 60 FPS as well. However, steering wheel support is poor, and it's limited to just the arcade game modes. So your best bet is still, amazingly, the Sega Saturn conversion. Play it on a real Saturn through a a decent HDMI upscaler and the bright colors still pop on a modern TV. Use game mode to get input lag down and it's perfectly playable. This version is also great with the Saturn Arcade Racer steering wheel, even though it doesn't have pedals. While a PC port of this version exists, it's notoriously difficult to get it to run well or indeed at all on anything and arguably looks worse cleaned up. The Saturn version is still one of the best racers ever made, so get on it. Namco's 90s racing opus sees you hurtling towards the new millennium, but in reality, the 20 years that followed has done nothing for this game's visuals. I don't mean that they've aged badly, far from it in fact, instead it's how they're displayed that is the problem. Playing the game on a PS3 or PS2 via an HDTV just doesn't look good at all, with shadows that are too dark and weird artifact effects around the trees if you enable texture smoothing. Then there's the PlayStation Classic Minis version, which introduces slowdown and other glitches. Plus, the razor-sharp image of HDMI does nothing for the game's extensive use of dithering, your screen looking in danger of Garry Kasparov popping out of the car window and checkmating you into next week. Your best bet is to use a PSP or PS Vita and buy the game from the on-device store, for which you'll be rewarded with a wonderfully crisp and responsive game that's pleasantly miniaturized with all the gameplay and analog steering intact. The 32-bit visuals still look lovely when viewed on the screen of the PS SP Go, and it's always reassuring to know you're carrying such a great racer in your pocket. Another Sega coin-op, this game really does seem to get better with age. Thankfully, the days of having to put up with 15 FPS and a letterbox display on Saturn are long gone. And while the Dreamcast conversion has its charms, there's one clear choice for playing this one today. An Xbox One X or Series X playing the Xbox 360 version. That's right, Daytona USA HD is an astonishing conversion of the arcade game code, which means the colors are right, the exquisite and deep handling model feels right, and it even has the unique arcade soundtrack intact. There is, however, one problem. While an Xbox One X will upscale the game to 4K and use its crazy good anti-aliasing on all the polygons to make it look awesome, you can't buy the game on the Xbox One store. It makes no sense, you can't even buy it via the Microsoft website. For some unknown reason, you need to hook up a real Xbox 360, navigate to the store, buy the game for your account, and then load that account onto your Xbox One X or Series X. It's all there, running on Microsoft's own Xbox 360 emulation, but better than the dear old 360 itself could ever manage. It's a lot of effort, but my goodness, the result is worth it. Some still maintain that Gran Turismo 3 is the best in the entire series, but it's difficult to get into it when you plug it into your HDTV because the low resolution of the PS2's output makes everything look shimmery and dull. You can play the game on a PS3 if your PS3 is an early model that supports PS2 backwards compatibility though. But that software emulation remains imperfect with occasional moments of lag and you don't get the amazing pressure sensitive buttons of the DualShock 2 which were showcased so beautifully in Polyphony's flagship racer. The game also 
also looks terrible to fit a widescreen TV. I'm afraid the best way to play Gran Turismo 3 is still, rather unbelievably, through a standard definition CRT TV using a real PS2 with a genuine DualShock 2 controller, or better yet, one of Logitech's early force feedback wheels. It's a lot of hassle to go to play something that should have been bettered four times over by now, but for some, it's the only way to do it. Or, of course, you could wait for Gran Turismo 7, which should contain a lot of GT3's content if Yamauchi's hints are anything to go by. Does anyone remember what Super Monaco GP even is anymore? Presumably lacking the license for the track name, Sega's gone very quiet about this game's existence for a long while now. While the original Monaco GP did show up on the Sega Classic Collection on PS2, along with some shockers of supposed modern day updates for other games, it's the pseudo sprite scaling first person action of the Mega Drive original that offers the best gameplay today. The Senna endorsed sequel is also great. The original feels Feels slightly faster and has a real romantic idealism about Grand Prix racing that just isn't present in modern sims like F1 2020, great though they are. You'll be pleased to hear I'm not going to recommend the Mega CD version, however. Instead, it is the original Mega Drive slash Genesis cartridge. But I am going to suggest it's actually best played on a Sega Nomad. Yes, alright, I know, that really is crazy talk, but hear me out. This handheld Genesis, a Mega Drive equivalent that was never released in Europe, is very pricey, but for some some reason, Super Monaco GP is one of the best games you can play on it. The fuzzy, tiny screen makes up for the jagged visuals, and the rivalry system is still among the best in any racing game. A pure challenge, wonderfully enjoyable, and likely to make you dig out 80s and 90s racing videos on YouTube. This is the most obvious one on the list because we've recently seen the game converted to Nintendo Switch with better than arcade visuals, even though it's running the actual arcade code. With HD resolution and doubled frame rate, this is an incredible achievement from the Wizard Conversion Kings at M2. The game is the template from which virtually every modern 3D racer was born, with changeable viewpoints, massive crashes. This comes after so many years of almost, but not quite, ports from Mega Drive slash Genesis to the 32X to the Saturn and the PS2, but none of them have either the handling or the sheer brazen awesomeness of the arcade title. If only the Nintendo Switch had steering wheel support. No matter whether on a massive TV or in handheld mode, Virtua Racing is the absolute business on Switch. The recent rework of Grid for modern machines fell short of the standard set by the 2008 original in almost every area except for graphical fidelity. But that's okay, because the original was so forward-thinking, it's still a great-looking game today. For the only time in this feature, however, I'm afraid it's not the console version that's going to get my recommendation. Modern PCs can run this game with all of its settings up at maximum and with insane resolutions, and all with silky smooth frame rates. But if console is your only way to go, then it has to be the X Xbox 360 version. It runs smoother than the PS3 version and looks better too. It's a pity the Ego engine was still being optimized because the game can get choppy when a sudden collision needs to be processed, but no matter. This is still one of the deepest, most spectacular, and rewarding racers that you can buy. It also works with Xbox 360 steering wheels too, though it's not the easiest game to control like a sim. The simulation is apparently so approximate that the car's brakes are actually just the in-game wind being turned up really hard on their bonnets. I swear a Codemasters employee told me this. But anyway, fantastic racer, best played on Xbox 360, or a compatible PC. The best way to play any version of OutRun 2 is OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast on the original Xbox. The irony here is that copies of this game were at one stage worth almost nothing. Back in 2009, you could play OutRun 2 Online HD on Xbox 360 or PS3, or play some form of the game on anything from a PSP to your kitchen toaster. But then what happened? Sega's Ferrari license expired, which meant that the game had to be taken down from the Xbox 360 and PS3 stores. It never came back. 
And so now, anyone wanting to enjoy this magnificent driving game needs to hunt backwards through previous releases to get their fix of Blue Sky Gaming. The very best of these is the half sequel on the original Xbox, which has twice the tracks of the original OutRun 2, thanks to the single player arcade release being included in full. The PSP version is miraculous, but choppy, and the PS2 version was compromised in fidelity to make it run properly. The original Xbox is the best way to play OutRun 2 in any form you can still easily buy. And yes, it does work on an Xbox 360 if you install the compatibility patch. While it takes an age to load and the sound effects can get stuck in a loop until you reset the game, it's still a joy to play it through HDMI. And so, OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast on an Xbox played through an Xbox 360 is your best bet today. Absolutely crazy. It's a Marmite game, but there's no denying Burnout Paradise set the template for every open-world racing game and has rarely been surpassed in any of the areas that really matter. It's ridiculously fast, runs at 60 FPS on everything, and has a superb soundtrack. Oh yes, and it's utterly spectacular. Thankfully, the original versions have aged incredibly well thanks to the clean art style and aforementioned silky smooth frame rates. But we've also had remastered versions that are playable on all the current consoles, including Nintendo Switch, complete with all of the best-in-class DLC that saw an entire extra island added to the already large and detailed game. But what's the best way to play it? Well, there's an argument for purity, and Vanilla Paradise, as it runs off a PS3 disc, has its appeal. The game is a little better on PS3 over Xbox 360, a rarity at the time, but indicative of Criterion's close relationship with Sony and its hardware. But for the full experience, it's got to be Burnout Paradise Remastered on Xbox Series X or PS5. Gorgeous 4K resolutions, teeny tiny load times, and achievements still unlock. There's no need to seek out old copies for this one. Modernity will suffice quite nicely, thank you very much. This is a tricky one because the ultimate Road Rash experience is different depending on which era you come from. There's an argument for the 3DO version, which plays very well on the original PlayStation, and less so on the Sega Saturn. There's also a big argument for trying the Sega Game Gear conversion, which has absolutely no right to deliver the same pseudo 3D environment as its 16-bit bigger brother, and it's still a stellar game, even crushed down into 8-bit. Even Amiga's conversion has its merits, despite it being noticeably slower. But the Road Rash that most people will remember fondly is Road Rash 2. Offering a new weapon, split-screen two-player mode, and fallible cops over its predecessor, the Mega Drive slash Genesis sequel to the original game is pure. But what happy coincidence that Road Rash 2 is the entry chosen for the recently released Mega Drive slash Genesis Classic Mini. With HDMI output and save states so you don't have to fiddle about with screenshots or paper for saving passwords, the Classic Mini's version is superb. It could have done with a boosted frame rate for modernity's sake, but not only does it look clear and crisp unlike the PSP slash EA replay conversion, it's also got the original Cat Whale soundtrack. It'll make a fantastic gift for anyone, really. Go pick one up. That is our selection of the best ways to play these classic racing games. There are a lot of games to choose from, of course, so send in your suggestions in the comments section down below if we missed any games, and we could create a part two of this video in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to not miss any of our incredible racing game videos. As always, keep it pinned.